Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's time for another reading from Papa's Comic Books and Coffee. And as you can see, it says USN. Ha ha hope all my veteran fe fellow have a very good Memorial Day. All right, today's reading will be The Transformers, number 17 from June of 86, Into the Smelting Pot, written by Bob Budinsky and Don Perlin. If you're interested in this book, it is available on my eBay webpage, papas-comic-books. All right, let's get started. Part one. Return to Cybertron. With no star in orbit, it spins through the endless reaches of space, a slivery sphere sparkling like a rare gem against the variety, the velvety back void. But a closer look reveals it to be a pockmarked mechanical wasteland, a misery-ridden monument to millions of years of war and oppression. This is Cybertron, home of Planet of the Transformers. There's three slaggers are mine, comrades, Find your own fun. Okay. Here in the province of Polonek, the Decepticon rulers consider each Transformer who is not one of them to be an unnecessary burden on the planet's dwindling fuel supply. The Decepticons maintain such Transformers are good for only one thing. They are a source of raw materials. Faster, he's gaining on us. We must find a place to hide. There is nowhere you can hide from the firepower of Ferek. Oh no, tell us Robotel, they've been hit. And as the Decepticon Harvester unit is already scooping up the bodies. Meanwhile, nearby, by the primary program itself, where is that malfunctioning foul up scrounge? We were supposed to be rendezvous 12 breams ago. Can't he ever do anything right? One bream is equal to approximately 8.3 min Earth minutes. Ha, ha, ha. You are making great sport of this slagger. No, stay away. I've done you no wrong. The little fellow looks to be serious trouble. That's a Decepticon hunter seeking skyships, sa saging his chases. His chassis. Hmm. Some days, nothing goes as planned. I have another game for you, Decepticon. I'll call it Try to Fly Straight After a Blast of My Electro Scrambler. An Autobot? My guidance system is electric impulses are confused. I think I'm going to crash. Let me change that from a possibility. Hey, let me go. Or it's a certainty. Whoops. Thank you. The name is Blaster. And if you want to thank me, you'll crawl back into a hole, pal. I've got better things to do than save the rusty hides of a robo wrenches like you. Meanwhile, outside the Dark Mount, the stronghold from which the Decepticons rule Polichek. Polihex. So far, so good. No one spotted me yet. I'm just too sneaky. My dead-end contacts say that spanner was taken here. Why the Decepticons would suddenly be interested in a neutralist scientist whose specialty is interdimensional engineering after leaving him alone for millennia is beyond my logic circuits. But I intend to find out soon, and when I do... Blaster and all the Autobots will finally appreciate me. They'll stop treating Scrounge like a junkyard dog. After all, none of them has had a hand that can do this. It's got wire-guided audio-video receptors in its fingers. And even if they had these features, they couldn't maneuver them as expertly as I can. Ah, looks like I've located a laboratory. Could be there holding Spanner here. Believe us, Shrapnel. This transmission we've recently received is the most profound revelation Cybertron has had almost 
50 Vorns. Apparently, Lord High Co Governor Stratix agrees with you, technician. Why else would he have Spanner abducted? One Vorn is equal to approximately 83 Earth years. There, I finished filtering out the interspace static from the signal so it can be played back and recorded by me. Wait till everybody hears this. Perfect. That's it. Now we can send it through the analyzer and cull from it all the data it contains. No sense remaining here. For that, I can have that data be decoded back at the auto base. And then no one will be able to deny that Scrounge is a worthy member of Autobots. An intruder! Gotta fold up. Get rolling out of here. And contact Blaster via the Inter-Autobot radio. Blaster, are you receiving me? Yes, Scrounge. Do you, did you locate Spanner? The Decepticons are holding him in Dark Mount, but I've uncovered something more important. I've intercepted and recorded the biggest news to hit Cybercon, Cybertron and 50,000 Vorns. Last time you sounded like that, you said St Stratix was dying. Turned out all he had was a rust spot rash. This time it's for real, Blaster. Trust me, I'll see you at the rendezvous point in two breams. As the Autobot streaks to meet Blaster, he passes through the dead-end home of the empties, Polyhex's most wretched citizens. Fuel, spare some fuel. Would you have a circuit board? You're not needing, mate? Clear the road, Rex. I'm on important business. A beaker of fuel, Scrounge, please. I've already paid you for the spanner info once Weasel don't ask for. Yo. You got inside Darkmount Autobot? A clever feat indeed. But getting out is ne not nearly as easy. Later, it's not like Scrounge not to show up. Hmm. Lifting what appears to be a stray wall plate fragment. Blaster descends into the secret entrance way of Autobase and walks through its security sensors. Microchip identification scan. Affirmative. Proceed, Blaster. Waiting for Blaster inside our Autobots, Power Glide, Cosmos, Sea Spray, Warpath, Beachcomber, and Base Commander Perceptor. What kept you, Blaster, showing off your marksmanship again? No, Power Glide. He couldn't hit an ocean of mercury if it fell in it. At least not without me to aim the gun for him, Sea Spray. I'm not in a jokey mood, Warpath. Scrounge has vanished. He said he had vitally important information to give me. We must form a search party at once. You have the authority to order that, Blaster. I command this unit. The rest of us are obviously found Scrounge less valuable than you do. No doubt this is another one of his self-serving fantasies, and he's afraid we'll catch him in another lie. Or else the Decepticons captured him, in which case he's already a slag slick, floating atop the smelting pool. Forget him, Blaster. I ought to punch out your optical senses for saying that Percepticon Scrounge was telling me the truth, and I'll prove it. You misunderstand me, Blaster. Look again at our wall of fame, sculptured Decept Deceptons of fabled Autobots. From our past, most prominent among them is the great Optimus Prime. Almost 50,000 Vorns ago, he and a crew of some of our greatest Autobot warriors were lost in space, victims of a desperate Decepticon ambush. The scales of war have tipped dramatically in the Decepticon's favor. Since then, they now control most of Cybertron. Our forces are too depleted to risk any unnecessary missions. Our best and only hope is to discover some technological advances that can we, we can use against the enemies. Only then can we begin to win back our world. Sit here and rust then with your statues. I'm going to find Scrounge. We're with you, Blaster. I'm ready to blast off right now. I could use some target practice. Let's go. Thank you, friends. Perceptor just said, Enough. I am outvoted. We will look for Scrounge, but one attempt only. We cannot afford to neglect our other duties for long.
In the shadow of Fortress Darkmount lies a festering pit of grisly ga gash in the skin of Cybertron. This is the smelting pool. The blood-red molten metal churning into the walls boils with the devastated bodies of Transformers disgorged into, into it by Decepticon Harvester units. Its perimeter is lined with heavily armed Decepticon guards who make sure that none who go in ever come out. The moans of the meek, the weak, the mutilated, and the dying echo within the pits, walls, as one of them sly beneath the pool, swirling surface never to be seen again. The intense heat painfully melts them into their component metals, while giant pipes pump their molten remains into the surface. There, they're cooled into solid ingots for future use as raw materials in unconstructing newer, more advanced Transformers. <clears throat> it is a horrible manner in which to die. Shrapnel will have, to have it no other way for his enemies. Your screams will soon join those rising from the pit below, Autobot. I will enjoy hearing that. But first, I think Straxus will want to hear what you have to say about your spying activities. He'll go deaf from metal fatigue before I ever talk. Inside, Straxus, long high governor Polynex holds court. As Decepticons kick back, bombshell, dorge, ramjet, and thrust look on. Please spare us. We've done no wrong. Have mercy. Mercy is not dispensed here, fools. Only death. Dispose of them. Why do you soil the floor of my throne room with this Autobot shrapnel? I caught him spying in the communications research lab, Lord Straxus. And what did you find out, Autobot? What were you going to tell your fellow weaklings? No, nothing. I wish to share you with share with you, Straxus. Maybe I can loosen your voice box by loosening your shoulder joint. Ah, my my arm, my special arm. There is no other like like it. Now there is not even one like it. He ripped it off. Dispose of him, Shrapnel. The information he has for this obsolete friend's matters not. He won't live long enough to tell them anyway. Elsewhere, Scrounge would have had to pass through here to the dead end on his way to meet me. Empties, have you seen the Autobot lately? We see no one here. Give us fuel or leave us alone, mate. I, I might have seen something. Perhaps some fuel would re-energize re my memory circuits. Cosmo steps forward. Here you go, old beggar. Drink this. Ah. Uh, okay, derelict. Dump your data or I'll tear your head off. I'll tear your head open and find it myself. Where is Scrounge? The Decepticon shrapnel captured him, flew him off to the direction of the Dark Mount. And that's all I know. There is a high probability Scrounge is dead by now, Blaster. There's nothing we can do but return to Autobase. I'm sorry, Blaster. Um, wish I could help. Yeah, buddy. Uh, keep your head up. Well, I'm still going to find him by myself. Soon as Blaster reaches the outskirts of the Decepticon stronghold, chances are Scrounge is down there in the smelting pool. Only one way to find out. First, I'll short-circuit that laser sentinel tower with my electro-scrambler. An Autobot come to feed yourself to the pit, have you? No. Guess again. But Blaster quickly attracts the attention of other guards, and you're outnumbered, Autobot. Prepare to jump, or would you like a push? Hold. This is renowned Autobot warrior Blaster. I'm sure Straxus would first want to bid him farewell in his own unique way. Why did he have to show up? Moments later, in a massive nearby chamber that serves a construction assembly area, Lord Straxus, I want you to meet somebody. Blaster! You try my patience, Shrapnel. The demands of this project <coughs> allow me not time to waste 
on wayward Autobots and idiots like you. But surely, Lord Straxus, finding two Autobots within so short a time period suggests a potential threat. Nothing exists that can threaten Straxus. Nothing. And he hits him. <clears throat> Toss him in the pool. And you, Shrapnel, can expect to join him there if you continue wasting my time. He thinks like I do. We both agree with this. The place should be because this is the only place I even have a chance of finding Scrounge. Yo, that stuff is hot. It seared my steel skin. Maybe I shouldn't be here. I better hurry find Scrounge and there he is. Blaster. They caught you too. You're doomed. Ah, uh, I let them catch me so I could find you. Hold on, little buddy. Hurry, the pain I must give you, the information. Forget the information. It's you I want. You'll never escape with me. I'm just slowing you down. It's too late for me. Don't argue. I didn't come this far just to leave you here. Suddenly. What? Power Glide, you did that? Stop wriggling, Scrounge. Quit your complaining and... You didn't think I was going to let you have all the fun by yourself, did you? Blaster, now grab on the console and swarming around here in moments. No, I will only hinder your escape. You must release me. You must. Scrounge, please. Let the pool finish doing to me what it has started. I won't leave you to die here. You're an Autobot. I've always been a failure as an Autobot. Now I have the chance to change that to do something worthwhile. Scrounge. But I need your help to do it. Bring this back to the auto base for me, please. Then maybe the others will think better of me. I have to pull you up, Blaster. The Decepticons are coming, are closing in. Hurry up, Power Glide. I have some important information that needs saving. Sea Spray, Cosmos, Beachcomber, and Warpath. They came too. I like you, Blaster, but I'm not stupid. I needed some help to keep the Decepticon guards distracted while I was pulling you, your mainframe, out of the fire. Besides, they all insisted on coming. Then all five of you are violating Perceptor's orders? Let's just say all five of us have been suffering short-term memory circuit malfunctions, which have been which now have been suddenly repaired, Autobots transform and roll out. We've accomplished our mission. But as the six Autobots speed away from the smelting pool, six Decepticon warriors attracted by the commotion take notice from nearby Dark Mount. Those are Autobot Decepticons transform and destroy. We're under attack and outgunned. Drop me by, drop me off by the machinery power glide. You got it. These pipes normally pump molten metal from the smelting pool. To the ingot fabrication machinery, but no longer. Arg, arg. Eat hot slag, Decepticons. Burn, you tin-plated tyrants. Feel what Scrounge felt when he tossed him into the stinking pit. Arg. Away, Decepticons, we must regroup. Come on, cowards. Stay and take your punishment like Transformers. I have never enough heat. I have enough heat here for everybody. They're gone, Blaster. You did it. Come. There's nothing more for us to do here. Let's go home. Soon back at Auto Base. Preliminary indications are that Scrounge's information could be of great significance. It's apparently an interspace transmission. This console will decode it into understandable audio and video signals. Greetings, fellow Decepticons. This is Soundwave. Before you is Earth, a planet rich in energy resources. Longtime readers will recognize this transmission as the one sound wave sent in Transformers number 10. Its dominant life form is the human 
a puny, primitive, organic creature inferior to Transformers in every way. Our group of Decepticons, led by Megatron Crash, landed here nearly 50,000 Vorns ago. We intended to conquer Earth and use it, its energy to refuel Cybertron, making it the most powerful, fearsome planet in the galaxy. We ask that you make the unnecessary arrangements, the necessary arrangements to take to assist us in this endeavor. But there is one force on Earth that could stand in our way, a group of Autobots led by Optimus Prime. He lives? Optimus Prime lives? Praise the primary program. This is a recording. It's fantastic, Blaster. And more importantly than giving us more facts, it gives us hope. And there is no greater gift than that. Wherever you are, Scrounge, I hope you heard that. You did good, little buddy. Next up, the bridge to nowhere. Transformers. Oh, there are two. Power pack. Well, I hope that was a good read. It was a little tough for me. I don't know why. Once again, if you like it, please hit the like button. Hit the dislike button. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Whatever you want to do. Again, this book is available on my eBay webpage, Papa's dash comic dash books have a good memorial day celebrate wisely and safely and we'll see you next time thank you